Good morning and welcome to worship at Broadway Baptist Church. Our focus for the service this morning is Home Mission. This is the Baptist Union scheme that supports ministries and ministers throughout England. We come together to worship God, to read his word and hear his word and to pray for others. Our first hymn is based on some verses from Revelation chapter 5 where we read about John's vision of heaven and earth worshipping God. Then I looked and heard the voice of many angels, numbering thousands upon thousands and ten thousand times ten thousand. They encircled the throne and the living creatures and the elders. In a loud voice they sang, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain, to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honour and glory and praise. Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and on the sea and all that is in them singing to him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb be praise and honour and glory and power for ever and ever. So we join together and sing the hymn Come Let Us Join Our Cheerful Song. Father, we praise you for the wonders of your creation, for your grace so freely given, and for your consistency. Thank you that though we are incapable of being consistently good and loving and righteous, you are those things for us. Forgive us for our inconsistency and bless us that we may know your love for us never changes. You are always loving and for that we give you thanks. In these shared moments, fill our hearts and minds with the Holy Spirit so that we can give ourselves into proper worship of you. In Jesus' name, Amen. Now let's join in singing two songs, encouraging each other to be really thankful. Give thanks with a grateful heart and some verses from the book of Lamentations 3. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. i 
steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning, new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness, O Lord. Great is thy faithfulness. Steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning, new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness, O Lord. Great faithfulness they are new every morning new every morning great is thy faithfulness oh lord great is thy faithfulness As I was preparing for today, I noticed on my coffee table that I'd got three thank you cards. I had one from one of the girls from Brigades for saying thank you for running Brigades. I have one from a cousin who I met up with when I was on holiday and we shared a meal together. And a third one from my niece and her husband for saying thank you for the wedding gift. Our reading today is the equivalent of a thank you card. So our first reading comes from Philippians chapter 4, starting at verse 10. I rejoice greatly in the Lord that at last you have renewed your concern for me. Indeed, you have been concerned, but you've had no opportunity to show it. I'm not saying this because I am in need, for I have learned to be content, whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do everything through him who gives me strength. Yet it was good of you to share in my troubles. Moreover, as you Philippians know, in the early days of your acquaintance with the gospel, when I set out from Macedonia, not one church shared with me in the matter of giving and receiving, except you only. For even when I was in Thessalonica, you sent me aid again and again when I was in need. Not that I am looking for a gift, but I am looking for what may be credited to your account. I have received full payment and even more. I'm amply supplied now that I have received from Epaphroditus the gifts you sent. They are a fragrant offering, an acceptable sacrifice pleasing to God. And my God will meet all your needs according to his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. To our God and Father be glory for ever and ever. Amen. This was Paul's thank you to the church at Philippi for the gifts they had sent to him. It wasn't a one-off gift. We see in verse 16, Paul refers to being in Thessalonica and the Philippian church sending aid again and again. In verse 18, he refers to Paphroditus having taken him a gift. The city of Philippi was a city of some importance. It was at the centre of a road network which brought traders to the city. It had gold and silver mines nearby which had brought wealth to the city and it was a Roman colony. We can read about Paul's time in Philippi in Acts chapter 16. This chapter centres around three people. Firstly, Lydia, the seller of purple. Secondly, the slave girl, who today would probably be described as having some sort of mental health problem and being used as a result of that. And thirdly, the Roman jailer. 
After sharing the good news of Jesus with Lydia and the Roman jailer, they and their families were baptised and the slave girl was healed of her condition. Maybe because of the ministry Paul exercised in Philippi and also the economic well-being of that city, they were able to send gifts to Paul so that he could continue his ministry in other places. So we have the thank you for the gifts that he had received. Paul was grateful not just for himself, but for the Philippian church. In verse 17, he says, not that I'm looking for a gift, but I'm looking for what may be credited to your account. Or put another way, the fruit which increases to your credit. And he also refers in verse 18 as the gifts being a fragrant offering, an acceptable sacrifice pleasing to God. Paul talks about the church of the day being in partnership with him in his ministry. So let's fast forward 2000 years to today. Being members of a Baptist church, we are in partnership with one another, with our fellow Christians through other churches in the Baptist Union and other Christians throughout the world. Today, we are seeing what that looks like for our partnership with other Baptist churches through the Baptist Union. And this is Do you know what a home mission is? Well, you've already heard today, it's the way that Baptist churches in Great Britain support each other financially and prayerfully. So every Baptist church is a home mission church. A Baptist Home Missionary Society began in London in 1797. With money supplied by individual churches, it supported itinerant ministers and preachers. The idea behind it came straight from the New Testament, as we've heard about Paul. From those early days, proper cooperation has grown within the Baptist denomination. Each church pays £4.60 for each member it has every year. This is called the subscription. Each church is also encouraged to pay 5% of its full income into the fund. This is called the appeal. In 2018, the appeal raised £3.8 million, a large percentage of the total fund's income. The subscription raised half a million. And all together, that accounts for about three quarters of the total fund. The remainder comes from legacies, from investment income, and from surplus from the Baptist Union Corporation, and a bit of income from some services provided to churches. Next one! The Baptist Union has huge resources that are being hoarded. False, if only. The Baptist Union aim to keep the operating costs as low as possible so they can invest as much as possible directly into mission rather than supporting significant overheads. Some modest reserves are kept for the rainy day. So where does the money go? It's used in three ways. It's used at a national level, at a regional level and at a local level. Next two! There's a huge team in Baptist House in Didcot. Simply not true. There are currently 20 full-time members of staff and 19 part-time members of staff at Baptist House, which is the headquarters of the Baptist Union in Didcot. This is proportionately fewer than any of the other major denominations. So nationally, Home Mission supports approximately 40 staff on specialist teams, legal, property, safeguarding and ministry. There are 13 regional associations, including the East Midlands Baptist Association, which is the one that Broadway belongs to. On a local level, grants are made to support mission in local churches and in pioneering projects. Some of the grants in the East Midlands include one at Trinity Baptist Church in Derby for their Renew Stocky Cathy. One of the team at Trinity says, thank you so much for the mission grant, which has enabled us to build a new church community with the local people of Stockbrook 
in central Derby, where they meet every Tuesday from 12.30 to 7.30 in a Renew Cafe. Another grant has been made to Andal Baptist Church. One of their members went on a bereavement training course. She says it was excellent and I would heartily recommend it to anybody with a desire to improve the support for the people in our community who are facing bereavement, end of life care or have been bereaved. And another grant in the East Midlands was made to Lubbers Thorpe Pioneering Ministry in Leicestershire, where a minister is attempting to set up a new church on a new housing estate. They're free! Only grants given directly to churches are real mission. No, not true. As churches and Christians, everything we do should be about mission. At the national and regional levels, Home Mission supports the teams which then support local churches and projects. At a local level, grants are made to some churches who cannot afford to pay a minister otherwise, and also to community projects. So, a bit of a recap. Everything we do as churches is mission. And the money to support all this mission comes from the churches, directly or indirectly. All Baptist churches are asked to give to home mission with a current recommended minimum of 5% of their total income. Together, in 2020, the churches of our region, the EMBA, gave £253,000 to home mission. A message from EMBA to churches. A huge thank you to our churches for their continued support to the work of Home Mission, especially given the additional challenges presented by the pandemic. As a Baptist family, let us continue to love, support and care for one another and share God's generosity so that in turn others may be blessed and God's kingdom extended. In a moment, we'll be hearing from the Reverend Mike Shaw. He is the Baptist Minister at Devonport in Plymouth. But before that, let's sing together a song of great encouragement for the church. By faith, we see the hand of God in the light of creation's grand design.
one of the home mission churches in the South West Baptist Association. Uh, and I'm going to look at today a little sermon for those of you who are considering why we give to home mission, what home mission is for, what home mission does. And the passage I'm reading from is Luke 6, 20 uh, to 23. Um, and it goes like this. Then Jesus turned to his disciples and said, God blesses you who are poor, the kingdom of God is yours. God blesses those who are hungry now, for you'll be satisfied. God blesses you who weep now, for in due time you will laugh. What blessings wait you when people hate you, exclude you, mock you and curse you as evil because you follow the Son of Man. When that happens, be happy. Yes, leap for joy, for a reward gr greater than that awaits you in heaven. And remember the ancestors treated the ancient prophets in the same way. And you're probably thinking, well, that's great, thanks. Well, why is he outside? Um, well, there's a reason I'm sitting outside and the location of the sermon is not accidental. Um, if I look that way, I can see a little bit of my house. If I walk maybe a minute that way, I will see the building that our church meets in. Um, but that's not the reason I'm doing a home mission sermon here. Around this spot where I'm sitting used to be where Pembroke Street Baptist Church, Baptist Chapel existed. It was built in 1781 and um, it was knocked down somewhere after the Second World War. Uh, and a new, these houses were put up more recently, but a new building found, was found for it in Crown Hill. It became Crown Hill Baptist Church. The first minister of the church was a man named Isaiah Burt. Um, and at this point, you're thinking, that's a really interesting story, but that still doesn't explain this location. Well, in 1797, Isaiah, along with another Plymouth minister, Baptist minister Philip Gibbs, they founded what, what we, we call the, the, the Baptist, the British, the English Baptist Home Mission Society. And it's what became our home mission. Um, uh, what became home mission. And they used it originally to fund mission into Cornwall. And one of the things they did, first things they did was they bought some land, but bought, bought some land in a place called Silver Street in Saltash. And um, that land was used to buy, well, was, was where Saltash Baptist Church began. Isaiah's first wife is actually buried in the churchyard, the graveyard of Saltash Baptist. So this spot here is quite likely 
the, the birthplace of home mission as we know it. It began around 223 years ago, somewhere around this spot. But before that, I want to go back to the passage. So the Luke Beatitudes um, and consider what Jesus is saying. Uh, we have, of course, as you probably well know, two forms of the Beatitudes, the version in Matthew um, and the version in Luke. Now we get the word Beatitude from the Greek word Beati, which means um, simply blessed, God blesses. And the first version, well, the first most popular version is in Matthew, and that's the longer version. And it doesn't contain, like Luke does, a list of sorrows as well as blessings. Uh, and Luke limits it to just four blessings. God blesses the poor, God blesses the hungry, God blesses those that weep, and God blesses the hated. And like Matthew, the Beatitudes in Luke demonstrate the, uh, demonstrate the upside down nature of the kingdom of God. The poor receive the kingdom of God. The hungry are satisfied. The, 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 those that weep will laugh and the hated and despised will receive joy and heavenly blessings. Unlike Matthew though, Luke is clear that when he says the poor, he means the literal poor, the physical poor, the material poor. Whereas of course, Matthew uses the poor in spirit. Uh, and I think from what we see in Luke, and also in some ways in Matthew, that God favours the people that we in our world don't. We think the people God blesses are the people we consider who are unblessed. And somehow, if that's what Jesus thinks, as the body of Christ, we need to think that also. Home mission is a great way for us as, the, as Baptists, as the part of the body of Christ, to live in that upside down way too, to support people and places that other parts of society forget. St John of Chrysostom said this, the rich exist for the sake of the poor and the poor exist to save the rich. I'd like you to think about that. The rich exist for the sake of the poor and the poor exist to save the rich. Home mission is about prioritising the parts of our nation where there is poverty, hunger, mourning and persecution. Home mission shouldn't be something that's tacked on at the end of our accounts. At the end of the year we kind of think how much do we need to give? But it should be, as they say in sport, the first name on the team sheet. Let's see how much we're going to give this year rather than how much we've got and how much then we'll give away. And the 5%, I believe, shouldn't be the baseline for our giving, a minimum giving. It should be the thing where we think, actually, we're going to start with 5% and see if we can give more. We see we should be trying to give above 5% as often as physically possible. And while I understand that we are in a COVID hit society and that's going to affect finances, particularly those people who rely on building rental. Um, but there's a principle that Paul teaches in, in 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 8 and chapter 9, where Paul says people not only gave from what they could afford, but far more. That giving is a privilege. And he says that God is generous with us. So we must too be a generous people. If we're following steps and footsteps of Christ, then generosity should be one of the markers of our um, discipleship of Jesus Christ. But there's a but, and there is always a but, isn't there? And, and people will say, well, doesn't home mission not only pay for mission? How much of it goes to admin, to didcot, to regional team wages? And yes, I think we need to admit and be honest that the money is needed and does go to those things. But the vast, no, the majority of the money that you give to home mission goes directly to churches in need, about just over 50%. The rest is shared 
between the association and the regional specialists, the specialist teams in Baptist House. So yes, your giving doesn't go to support, all of it go to support mission on the ground. But without those support, without the support of the association, without the support of Didcot, some of those home mission churches could not exist because I know from a leader of a home mission church that I rely on my regional team and specialist teams in Didcot to enable me as a church minister to function. I don't have administrative capabilities like, like, you know, like, like some bigger churches do. So we have to rely on the specialist teams and our regional teams for that. Anyway, so here I am, Pembroke Street, Pembroke Street Baptist Church, and the place, the birthplace of home mission in 1797. And in 1797, Devonport was known as Plymouth Dock. Um, and it wasn't a particularly poor area then. In fact, if anything, because of the dockyard, it was an area of great wealth. But times have changed. Uh, lack of investment after the destruction which Devonport faced during World War II. Um, a decline in the dockyard from, in its heyday, 25,000 people to just a few decades ago to just a few thousand now. Devonport is now one of the most deprived areas in the country. Children have the highest obesity rates in Devon here. Children arrive at local, high, local schools, like primary schools, 18 to 24 months below national development levels. 50% of the families around here would qualify if they still did it for, home, uh, for, for free school meals. Householder, householder employ, unemployment is above national levels. The job club in Devonport is the busiest in the city. Life expectancy here, is seven to eight years below many other parts of the city of Plymouth. And in the area I live, we have just two churches, a very elderly Anglican congregation, which meets midweek, doesn't even meet on a Sunday. Uh, and our little church of 30 people and potentially at the moment, 15 people on a Sunday. Devonport went from the place where home mission began to now a receiver of a home mission grant. Our passion as a church is to bring hope to people who are hopeless. Um, in normal times, we would do this by yarn bombing, the, uh, the, the only you know, street we have with shops in, um, or weeding and decorating, doing, doing all manner of different things to tidy up that road. Uh, we have a toddler group in a cafe that's just over there. We have an art and craft group that meets in that same cafe. Uh, we have, we, last year for our carol service, we met not in our building, but in a local pub. During the COVID lockdown, we helped set up a local food bank. Uh, we have done litter picks. Uh, we ha have a, a local youth worker that's attached to the local churches around here and we got him to deliver food on an electric bike. Uh, we shopped for isolated people. We, I personally, spent a lot of time walking one of our, my neighbour's dogs. One local community leader constantly praises our efforts in the community. At one point she said to me, I think it's only you and, uh, you and me that care about this community. Our focus is not on just surviving and getting through, but seeing the kingdom of God flourish in this area. None of this, none of it could happen without the wonderful gift of home mission. So firstly, what now? Firstly, I wanna thank you for the money that your church already gives. Places, like Devonport Baptist Church may never be sustainable, self-sustainable, but because of home mission, we can exist. And while your giving is utterly amazing, if you look at the, the, the books, the fact is that home mission has declined, is declining year on year, which means that less and less projects like ourselves can be funded. So first of all, you know, could your church give beyond that 5%? Or could it even, you know, this year maybe, the first time give that 5%? But there's another thing you could do for us. 
pray for us. Watch home mission videos and, and pray for the people in them. Jesus said, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. So pray to the Lord of the harvest that he would send workers. The thing you can pray for us is that more people, more people of faith, move into areas like Devonport, live, work and worship here. Because if more Christians lived, worked and worshipped in this area, it would make a dramatic input impact into our into our community, into the people around here. They would see the kingdom of God move through people in a powerful way. Devonport is no longer a sender of, uh, of home mission projects. We are a receiver. And actually in places like Devonport, we are an unreached people group. We need missionaries. We need people to come and be the good news of Jesus Christ in these streets, in these houses, in these shops, to see the poor, the hungry, the weeping and the hated blessed, to see the upside down nature of the kingdom of God come. So if you can, I'd like you to pray with me these words. And if you agree, please do say Amen. Lord, thank you for how much you've sustained ministry in places like Devonport through home mission. Pray that many more places like Devonport could be blessed. Thank you for home mission, the Home Mission Society created here 223 years ago. And we pray that this year will be a bumper harvest. Pray that you would send harvest workers into ripe fields ready for harvesting. Thank you for listening. I pray that God blesses you in whatever way today. Amen. Father God, we bring to you our prayers and concerns for others. We pray for Lynn Green as she leads the Baptist Union. Give her wisdom and discernment to lead the union in your way. We pray for all those who work within the specialist teams at Baptist House. We give thanks for their expertise in their various responsibilities. We pray that the resources will be released so that their work is effective and enables your good news to be made known. We remember in our prayers the team in the East Midlands Baptist Association. We pray for Mark, the team leader, for Mike and Nick, the regional ministers, and Becky and Kathy in their administrative roles. May they work well together as a team, and we pray you will uphold them as they seek to serve you in good times and not so good times. We remember too in our prayers the work of the Baptist colleges, training ministers and lay people so that they are better equipped to serve you. We pray for those considering such training. May they hear and see the call clearly, and we pray that the practical arrangements may fall into place. We pray for wisdom for those who have the responsibility of making home mission grants and managing the finances. And for those who receive the gifts, and grants, we pray that the financial resources will enable people's lives to be changed and for your kingdom to be extended. We pray for the mission of this church. Help us to see clearly what the priorities should be. We pray for your strength and courage to share your good news with those we meet. We pray now for the needs of the world. In a week that has seen the desperation of Afghans trying to flee their country, as they crowded onto a runway as a US plane took off. We pray for peace in that land. We pray for justice and a dialogue that doesn't mean the voices and the needs of the vulnerable are ignored. We pray that the international community will not turn its back on Afghanistan and that somehow there will be a society where people can live in peace. We pray for forgiveness for the part that the West may have played in creating the situation that now exists in Afghanistan. As Haiti is struck by another disaster, we pray that aid will be provided so that the people of that land will have food and water and will be able to rebuild in a sustainable way. May aid agencies responding to the crisis have the resources they need 
to meet the demands in an effective and fair way. Forgive us, Father God, when we think of ourselves first and forget that we are part of one world. Help us to see with your eyes, to love with your heart and to care with your compassion. We pray these prayers in your name. Amen. And we finish our service today as we sing that great hymn of praise to the God who brought our salvation through the sacrifice of his son. Crown him with many crowns. Jesus into the world. May we be a blessing to those around us. May the Father's hand keep us from stumbling. The footprints of Jesus give us confidence to follow and the fire of the Spirit keep us warm and safe in our walk with God this week. Amen. Sin.
you know.